And Jesus said, Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Welcome to today's program, It's Really Supernatural, Acts of the Holy Spirit. I'm your host, Henry Schaefer. I believe in the supernatural, and God is on the move in these last days. Let's move into the program and see another chapter that could be written in the book of Acts. Well, hello and welcome, CSRA. Welcome to another episode of It's Really Supernatural. I'm your host, Henry Schaefer. It is uh, January the 12th, 2018. And make sure I said that right, everybody. Right. January the 12th, 2018, 7 o'clock, right at the top of the hour. And I just want to welcome in our listening audience. God bless you for tuning in tonight. we got an exciting program with you. We also have a couple of other people here in the studio yes. with us as well. So I'll let y'all do your introduction, and then I'm going to get us on Facebook. How about that? All right. Go ahead. Uh, Dana Turner here. I'm glad to be here tonight. we got an exciting show. I'm awesome looking show. forward to. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. JFK in the house. That's All right. right. It's kind of it's uh, rainy outside right now. It is. And it's kind of bad out there. So I just want to get everybody just to settle back, just settle right on down and enjoy tonight. And uh, um, just say, if, you, if you're getting ready to go eat, go ahead and take your cell phone uh -huh. and go ahead and go to uh, cwchrist.com. Go to that red button right there. And what you'll be able to do when you do that, you will be able to um, uh, hit, click that red button and listen to us anywhere in the world. So you can sit right there on the table as you're coming by and saying, hey, what are y'all listening to? And you can say, <laughs> hey, you, hey, listen here. I'm not sure if you're ready for this or not, but this, this program right here is called It's Really Supernatural. And you definitely yeah. want to be uh, listening tonight. Yeah. We got we got a good program lined up for tonight. I'll go ahead while you're getting ready there. I've shared it across my Facebook. And okay. um, Jason Cottle, he says, hey, guys, glad to be here listening. Uh, Janae's listening and watching. Uh, Mary Hannah, so glad to have all of y'all watching us tonight. Let's see. And listen, while we're here, while we're getting lined up, I just wanted to give a shout out to Whippoorwill Farms and Lee Moore Pool Services. They are the sponsors of It's Really Supernatural here on WCC 99.9 FM. So thank you to those. And, and while you're listening, guys, um, we are always looking for sponsors here for our shows at the radio station. So any of you that are interested. You can let us know. Go to cwchrist.com, and you it's up at the top. You can click send an email, and you can send us an email, and we'll get back to you and tell you how you can join. They call that number or, right there, 803-998-1117. Uh, yeah, and they can leave a voicemail. Leave a voicemail, okay. And say, hey, we'll get right back to you. So 803-998-1117. Leave the voicemail. Uh, someone here from the radio station will call you back and say, hey, I want to be a sponsor. That's right. Of it's I, really supernatural. Of it's really supernatural. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. That's and it. So, <laughs> on all your monies and all your finances are keeps us on the air. Right. Keeps us going. I want to ask you the question. Okay. You know, what we're going to talk about. Let me give you, just let me give you the, the title of what we're going to talk mm -hmm. about. We're going to be talking about the destiny cards. Christian destiny cards uh -huh. versus tarot cards. So that's kind of the subject we're going to be talking about tonight. And, you know, and so that's that that's just let you know we're going in that direction. OK. Uh, Christian destiny cards versus tarot cards. And I asked a question out there. You know, I've been going, you know, we we start off the new year. We do a lot mm -hmm. of new things and everything. We're even talking about adding uh, some more morning shows. OK. I mean, y'all got a, a wonderful morning show, Your Morning Manna. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's our flag. That's our flagship morning flagship show. Flagship morning show, <laughs> right. It's the only one we got. But it's a good, I mean, it's the yeah. best one. Yeah, it's, uh, awesome. it's awesome. I mean, yes, it's, it it's rated way on up there, so we get a lot from that. So we're talking about maybe starting a couple of other morning shows as well uh, this year. Uh, so we start them, uh, start doing those kind of things. Do we need to keep doing IRS? Absolutely, do we, we do. To get everybody on that Facebook, then okay. if you're there and say, yes, keep doing IRS. I listen. And, you know, we got closet listeners. We do. I know we got, you know, <laughs> those are the people who listen in just to see what we're talking about. Right. So that they, because they don't hear it anywhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are closet listeners. And then we got a lot of pastors who just listen in just to say whether or not they can talk about us talk about it about right what we yeah <laughs> okay so guys if yeah. you were if you're watching us on facebook tonight first of all let us know that you're watching and where you're watching from that's right uh we and uh, you heard the pastor he wants to know should he keep doing it's really, it's supernatural. really supernatural we need a yes or a no yeah also while you're looking right down there below you see that share go ahead and share that click the uh click the share button right there 
and share it out to your friends because they're going to want to be able to listen to this program tonight. Right. That's, that. That's right. It's going to be a good one. Now, so, Pastor, if you if we're in the search for morning morning material uh-huh. yeah, or a different t- – you think the, the, this has been a good slot time slot for me as far as this show. Uh-huh. You know? Right. And of course, you know – At nighttime or 7 o'clock? Yeah, yeah, it has been, but yeah. I'm not saying I wouldn't be open to, you know, other things, yeah. you know. But um, well, you know, we'd like to hear from our, hear from hear from our listeners and let yes. us know what they want. What would they like to hear? Yeah, I, you know, if if this is like, this is not interesting to you. I mean, we're just kind of because we're sitting here, we don't see nobody. Right. There ain't yeah. nobody out there. We look at each other. We see each other. We just talk. We right. Talk, you know, right. and we say that this is what we need to talk about. Somebody tonight. might be watching us. That's yeah. it. So guys, go ahead and hit that share button. Send up some uh send up some hearts and some thumbs up and different things and let us know that you're watching. I like Give the us way some Dana does that. Uh, um, so we can know and be sure to share this. Okay. So our subject tonight, I'm really excited about it. Destin- well, you're the one who shared it to me. He said, right. Hey, we need to talk about this here. I go, what? Yeah. Destiny yeah. card, destiny card. That's something else. Right okay. There. So I, I went on the internet and I started looking up and you know, true news has a lot of articles about stuff true like news this. is against this stuff all you, together. Yeah. You I better mean, believe big, it. I'm so, against this. <laughs> so, uh, December 19th, 2017, one of the pastors of um, a big mega church okay. wrote this article, and she titled it "A Christmas Critique of Destiny Cards." Destiny cards. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'd like to read this article. It's not long at all, but I want you to listen to what she compares this to. Go ahead, because some people, some people may not know what destiny cards are at all. Okay. So when when they talk about destiny cards, they're talking about taking. Uh, so cards like tarot cards or a deck of playing cards or cards of mm-hmm. that sort mm-hmm. and laying them out before people mm-hmm. and and taking it and sharing their spiritual destiny as far as Christians, you know, sitting there in the foyer, the church or whatever, uh, in the back, whatever doing, and they're sharing that destiny based off these cards of what God has for them mm-hmm. in the future. I mean, and so they've taken that, kind of like brought that into destiny cards, Christian destiny. I mean, this is mm-hmm. a real deal. Right. You know, so there are pros and cons on this. So we are kind of, and there are those who are out there who are saying definitely not. Then there's those over there who say, what are they talking about? And then there may be those who, hey, I have my own set, and this is what I go by in my own life. So that's why we want to bring this out and just say, hey, listen, is this slipping into the church? Mm-hmm. And is this slipping into Christian's life? And that um, where does this play in at? Is this something that, that we should be involved in or even going down that road? So now, with that being said, we are up on this. Right. And you've got an article here. You're going to read about it. And yes. I don't know what I don't know what flavor they're going to take towards it. So I'm going to let you read okay. that now and see what they All got right. to say about it. Okay. So she wrote this on December 17th, and it says there had been some recent concern about the ministry of Christ alignment and their supposed use of tarot cards in ministering to people at New Age festivals. New Age. Now, you remember mm-hmm. that word, New Age festivals. Mm-hmm. And Christ alignment. Mm-hmm. is a group that is uh, from Australia? New Zealand. New Zealand, that's New it. Zealand. Well, that's, mm-hmm. that's further on yeah, out there. Right, but right. You're, you, you're going to hop on Australia to get to, to get New there. Zealand. Right, somewhere. okay. All right. She says, so first, destiny cards are not tarot cards. They do, however, have a similar look that attracts people who are searching for a reading. Mm-hmm. What they get from Christ Alignment staff is a prophetic word about their destiny which is to have a personal relationship with Father God through Jesus Christ and an encounter through the Holy Spirit. Destiny cards are simple images that help to communicate the message of the good news to those who are searching for hope. Second, and this is where this messes me up, the Apostle Paul emphasized that he became all things to all men so that he could somehow win them to Christ. And that's what they, that's what they use. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's how they uh, reconcile that in their mind is is that I become all things to all men that I might win some. Mm-hmm. They say that just because Paul used the altar to the unknown God to preach from, he certainly was not buying into the Athenians false religious beliefs nor condoned it in any way. No, he said he was telling them. Can I interject? Sure. Yes. Yes. He Please. was telling them yes. while he was preaching at the unknown altar. He used that saying that there is a God that you recognize. That is unknown to you. You may have left one out. 
is what the Athenians mm-hmm. were saying. You mm-hmm. may have left mm-hmm. one out. And Paul, through the Holy Spirit, says, use that as a theme to preach from because there is a God that they don't know about. And th- he said, in that God, I declare unto you. So he used that article there mm-hmm. of the unknown God to be able to share with them about God, Jesus right. Christ, uh-huh. and what had happened uh-huh. to him. He just used that and said, hey, this is the open door mm-hmm. to be able to share that with. But in their mind, they weren't thinking about God or Jesus Christ. They're just saying, hey, in case we've left one out, this is the altar to him. Right. So that mm-hmm. we don't that we don't offend him in, in that. So anyway. Okay. So third, we see many examples. And they're saying that Jesus always spoke in parables. And that communicated the message in creative ways to people. And says, so we see many examples in church history of creatively expressing the message of the gospel through worldly or even demonically inspired expressions. John and Charles Wesley changed the lyrics to a famous bar tunes so that the unchurched could worship. Many of these songs have become part of our sacred hymnal, even though they were demonically inspired songs to lead people into all sorts of immorality. Mm Mm-hmm. Can you believe that? All right. Okay. So Constantine. That made the, the, might be the only tune he knew. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. That's the only tune I can play. Okay. Okay. All Four. right. <laughs> prophecy. Listen to this. Prophecy is a gift that we are all supposed to use, especially in communicating the good news. Prophecy is simply speaking on behalf of God and what we would want to say to them to encourage them or to give them hope for salvation. Okay. The pro- The Apostle Paul was very clear that we are Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. So, is that the definition of prophecy? No. Prophesying? No. No. No, I mean, I'm I'm sitting here going. I know you're saying that, right. Yeah, right. I mean, that's messed up. Okay. Fifth, the term destiny cards is used in a wide variety by a lot of different people and groups. My and she's saying my destiny cards are developed from a prophetic picture that I will draw about and what I think someone may need to hear from God. Right. And finally, I and my team have seen thousands of people come to Christ as we have passed out our destiny cards to people in all sorts of environments and events. Yeah, is that the one that you're reading, the update, Bethel? No, no, no. no. I was just reading. It it. was one. It was a Christmas critique of destiny cards. Okay, wonderful. It was just her, her personal article that she wrote because she was getting such... Bad flack about it. Flack about destiny cards. Okay. Oh, okay. that was her rebuttal coming yes, back. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. I got it. Now this. That. Uh, what was the name of that place there in New Zealand? Christ. Christ. Uh, uh, Christ, Christ, Christ alignment. alignment. Christ alignment. Christ alignment. Yes. Now when when I look at what when I look at their mission or what I have understand what I understand about the way that a lot of people are ministering to the group of people who are out there that um, are new age. I mean, there. When you look at our television and you look at um, Gifted, there's there's that series. Mm-hmm. You know, it's get closing out the Gifted ones. Woo wee! Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, that's really supernatural stuff there. Uh-huh. And then when you look at um, all the demonic type things that's on television, and do, dealing with the supernatural, all the way from witches, witchcraft, or what have you, anything like that, then there is a. And I'm talking about these people are in church. I mean, they yes, will come to our church yes, Sunday. Right. They mm-hmm. will come there Sunday, mm-hmm. whether or not someone says, you mean they'll be they'll be in a church of God or in a bad, bad. Yes, they'll be in your Baptist church, your mm-hmm. Methodist church. They sit there and watch that television. Then they come to church. And then those people are in church. And then what happens is the what what happens is that that spirit that's behind that. Um, there are people who were uh, over the church. They want to reach people. Mm-hmm. So they have and they have recognized that there is a group of people who are out there that are seated, unchurched, seated with this type of philosophy in their life mm-hmm. about all the supernatural things. And they ride up and down the roads and they see Madam Grace and they see all the tarot cards. Mm-hmm. They see um, the big red palms and people are searching for truth and what their destiny is and all. And those that maybe on the fringe themselves who were in ministry saying, let's use this as a way to reach this group of people who understand destiny through cards. See what mm-hmm. I'm getting at? It's kind of like uh, the secret friendly church. You That's know, this, messed up though, Pastor. It is messed up, it's but messed I'm telling up. you, that, I'm telling you what they do. That's what they're doing. They're saying, okay, they're used to 
the tarot cards. Uh -huh. So now what we'll do is we'll introduce these cards as a way for God to be able to reach them in their destinies, not in the hands of the tarot, but it's in the hands of God. And they lay these things out before them and share their debt like prophecy. Mm -hmm. They prophesy through the cards. It's like Christian prophecy. So that is this this is what that lady right there is trying to say mm -hmm. is that she this is her her mindset and what she's looking at for people in there and i'm going and so that's why you have things that happens in church that the strobe lights the bar scene the, the strobe light machines. the fog machines and things like that you got to realize in the dimming of the lights and getting i mean it's setting the stage to where and i'm not against that you got to realize that I think there's a place for that, mm -hmm. but then there's a place for understanding why are we doing this here and what's the hidden thing behind it right. to bring in this group of people that will attract them and think that the church is just like the world. In reality, what it is, is that that's why true news is so much against this. You think they still want us but, to but do, Pastor, you think they still want us to do is yeah, really supernatural okay. program. But Pastor, <laughs> let me, let me ask you this. And you say that, you know, we, these kind of things in the church. God, I mean, the church is is supposed to be different and separate to a degree, and not yeah, like the you world. Think? Yeah. yeah. So it says that we're called out of darkness into His marvelous light. That we are chosen and we're out. And we're to be a city on a hill and a light, you know, and all this stuff. Um, we're not supposed to just blend in and look like the world. Right. That's exactly. And, and you know, even part of this, and I di I didn't read it on purpose because I knew it would take us down a rabbit trail, but. She even said that she gives a testimony about this one lady getting healed from pancreatitis. I believe it all. And, and you know, the thing about it is we know what well, we that do. All that means is that demonically, demonically they, they just went, yeah, and yeah. went back for a while. Yeah, and, exactly. You know what I mean? So it's I didn't demonic. even go there. Healing's demonic. Right. And what happens is that to deceive the people, uh, it's like it, cancer. It just hides itself hides. or the pancreatitis mm -hmm. hides mm -hmm. itself. Now, Hey, I got healed in reality. No, there's nothing that you get from the devil that he doesn't bring more. That's exactly right. I mean? There's That's nothing exactly right. that you get from the devil that he doesn't get more. So if you, if you, this goes away, he's got a whole lot more open door seven times yes. worse. He brings mm -hmm. right on in uh, with So that. yesterday on true news, and this is just a very short paragraph here. And I, I had to Let's print this it. because I thought this was just yesterday on true news, January 11th, 2018. It says that. Today, Rick Wiles discusses the heresy enclosed in the New Age Manifesto, The Psychics of Heaven. <laughs> Co-authored by charismaniac leaders of the modern-day New Apostolic Reformation. Uh, it says, uh, falling feathers and gold dust are lame stuff compared to the weirdness between today's charismatic and the charismaniac. Listen to this, Pastor. These days, it is bizarre stuff like Christian Ouija boards called angel boards, Christian tarot cards called destiny cards, fire tunnels, sozo prayers, and holy yoga classes. They're no longer legitimate charismatics. They are charismaniacs. The legitimate charismatic movement was infiltrated and taken over years ago, and today most charismatic churches are under the spells of witches, warlocks and new age gurus posing as pastors teachers and prophets yeah i believe that now I, that now, was yesterday yeah now true news yeah now i watched that mm -hmm. i watched that before i came tonight uh -huh. because i i'm going i don't know if we need to get in all this or not it's right. pretty it's pretty heavy pastor this mm -hmm. is heavy, it is this is one of the heaviest ones i think we've ever done but uh, people need to subject. know yes they need to know yeah, exactly so uh, the warning we sound the alarm uh in this here it's 719 it's 19 minutes after the top of the hour you listening to what it's, it's really, really supernatural. supernatural and you never know what you're going to listen to when you get <laughs> yeah. to this place here yeah. what you're going right. to hear that's right but the thing is uh the reason why we're talking about it because it, it is supernatural and it is a form of destiny mm -hmm. and whatever you think's in those cards you understand what i mean and you buy into that then that forms your destiny for the future now let me let me just share with you what um uh, Derek Prince talks about. Now, you know, there's a lot of people who just don't believe in the supernatural thing. That's, that's why we do the show. Right. And right. that's the reason why that's the reason why we have seen so many supernatural things mm -hmm. as well, as far as from God working in people's life and things like that. But here's what Derek Prince says. He said that there was a lady that came to him and prophesied over him that she says, I see you in a car wreck and your car is raining to a tree and that, you know, there's a car and there's a car wreck coming. Now she prophesied that over him. 
And uh, he immediately recognized, he said, that's not the spirit of God, but that was the spirit of witchcraft, a prophet, a, a, a mm-hmm. false prophecy that was speaking through him, right. through her. And he says, in the name of Jesus, I don't receive that prophecy. I don't receive that destiny for me. In the name of Jesus, I don't receive that. And he went on. He lived his life out. He never had that wreck. Right, and right. He tells He tells the story in his testimony. And I'm telling people, y'all need to listen to this. Right. People need to educate themselves other than 15 more ways to get saved mm-hmm. or, you know, 15. <laughs> you need to understand the world that's going on around us. Mm-hmm. And that's why these people are coming to the church so mm-hmm. we can help them. Here's what he said. If I had given myself over into receiving that destiny. Mm-hmm. And had always been afraid of the car wreck. I got, hey, I got to be drive very careful. On. That would have been part of his destiny that he would have formed in his life. Mm-hmm. And he would have went that he would have received that spoken, that curse into his life. And that's the purpose of just what he says about one thing. And this opens the door through your destiny cards or through your tarot cards that opens up your life into receiving whatever someone wants to speak into your life. Christian Ouija boards called angel boards. Are mm. you serious? Isn't that amazing? I mean, I'm, I was just, when I read that, I was like, wow. I, you know, I don't know how anybody, anybody who calls themselves a Christian could think that this is okay. Right. I just well, absolutely don't. Well, I mean, they, they got to be, they got to be to a degree, to, to that degree, they have to be. A, a spirit of deception working. Mm-hmm. They have to have mm-hmm. deception. Go ahead, Jerome. Let you. What I was going to say is, is that the thing about it is, when you say, call your name a Christian, if they're very carnal and they're not very spiritual at all, the thing is, is that they don't really know the difference. Yeah. Now you know they really don't. I mean, yeah. a lot. I mean, you got a lot of Christians. Out well, you're there right because a lot of people today call themselves Christians right. that don't. Yes, okay. They, they don't have true. Re- they're not in relationship with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, I mean, I know there are many people out there that probably wouldn't have much of an issue going to see a psychic or a palm reader or a tarot card reader. They don't. They don't. They don't discern the difference or Mm -hmm. they don't see the urgency or the importance of not going. In other words, they don't even know the danger. Right. In other words, it's kind of like they're walking on the side of a cliff when they choose to go there, but they don't realize that because they're carnally minded. Mm -hmm. And so. Well, I guess that's a good reason why we're doing this show, and hopefully there sh- people share this. Right, and I know Pastor's yes. got, he's bubbling over yeah, right he's now. Yeah, he's got something he wants to share. What I'm just yeah. trying to say is that uh, the reason why some people, like you said, or they may go to a, a reader or something like that to try to find out is, first of all, is the pastors haven't taught them how do they determine their destiny from God. Mm-hmm. And they really want to know. And they've been seated with this stuff from television. And growing up, and they said, well, this is just what I've always seen. Right. And if there was something wrong with it, surely my pastor would, would have, have said something you. about it. Right. And he would have warned me of this here. But, I mean, he went and did it himself. Huh? And right. And he's told us what, what yeah. was said or something like that. And he didn't say anything because you got to realize if you have some of your healthy tithe payers who are doing this, they're afraid to say anything. Say anything against it, right. Again, they're not going to say anything against it. And they're not going to upset anybody. Well, to me, it's like people that read horoscopes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. well, this, the hor- my horoscope today says so-and-so and so-and-so. That's garbage. Right. I, you know, I mean. Here, here again, it's, it's been, it's been but, around. Yes. Uh, the masses, you know, have, you know, adopt, you know, establish it or, you know, engage mm-hmm. in it. So they look at it and they've. You know, they don't have any hard conviction mm-hmm. when it comes to staying away from those to- sort of things. But God will clearly tell us in the word to just you. So when you see that coming, you're supposed to be running the other direction. Right. And the discernment they don't have. Well, what about the fact that um, TV and everything just is indoctrinating? Exactly. I mean, that's exactly everything right. you turn on on the TV is has to do with something supernatural. Right. But it's not about God. Right. You know, and see, that's the thing, just like myself, I'm one of those people who watch very little of any television. Right. So if I just happen to stumble across a television show, I am, it's kind of like I go away and then I come back. And because I haven't been sitting and simmering in it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I see the the big shift in how things are being intensified as right. far as the war, spiritual warfare that's being mm-hmm. done 
on the television set. And I'm saying to myself, I cannot believe this is actually on television. Whereas the average <laughs> person, if they're watching TV all the time, they are slowly being desensitized. It, they, they don't even pay attention You're to right. it. They right. don't, they don't let me see tell you, it. Let me tell you how desensitized we are okay. to television stuff. So here we are sitting there watching something on the te- watch, watching something on Christian television. Okay. Christian television or news, just news channel. On. The next thing you know, what what comes up on there is a commercial about Viagra. Mm-hmm. And, and then, that, or so, uh, some about women's lingerie, uh-huh. or about uh, their time of the month, uh-huh. or those kind of things. I'm going, and I'm sitting there going, my kids are in the room here with me, my grandkids. <laughs> right. Why is this on TV? Yeah. Why do we think that this is normal? <laughs> yes. Why do we think this is normal? Yeah. And they shouldn't even be watching this themselves. And right. they've got the newest one that's on there now, the commercial. And it was very offensive to me. Me and Bill were sitting there, and I was like, and it was a commercial about this couple that comes running into the drugstore talking about this special kind of, yeah, you know, and they're just all excited to buy it and go. To, it and was, I'm going, I, know, I know what it was. I know uh, what it was. I got it. I got it. I know what uh, it was. Don't wait a minute. I got it. Don't let me say it. Let me tell you what it was. I know exactly. It was the newest release from the Harlequin series no. of books. <laughs> right. I mean, it's crazy. And it's like that kind of stuff. And people just yeah. sit there. Right. And it's like their minds are so desensitized to it that they don't even pay attention to the mm-hmm. trash. Right. That's coming through their TV. Right. I find myself a lot of times. I don't watch a lot of TV, but even on some of those channels that you do and those they pop through, I'm constantly in the name of Jesus. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse, yes. I refuse no, no, that, no transference. I mean, I'm, I mean, you're now, you know, doing that. But you listen to this here. We believe in that uh-huh. of transference of a spirit because we believe in deliverance. Right. Right. And see, and we're Christians, full of the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues, uh-huh. going to heaven. And we know that we can be influenced absolutely by that type of stuff by watching it. That's an open door. Okay, uh-huh. so we say in the name of Jesus, hey, uh, uh-uh. uh, you know, there's you find no open door here. You cannot uh, interfere with my, my life or anything. But those who are ignorant to deliverance, uh-huh. they don't realize that they are being bombarded by a spiritual entity, right? That uh-huh. wants to find the open door into their life. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And they're, they they don't have their armor up. They don't have their shield up. Oh, I'm covered in the blood this morning. When I got out of bed, I put my blood on. That's not, see, you don't even realize you're in a warfare. Right. All day long, and this, and this thing happens. So we know we can be influenced. Therefore, we can repel it. Those who are out there, the pastors tell them they can't, their Christians can't be mm-hmm. influenced by anything. Well, then they're the ones who are demonized they're the ones that the open door come. it's it's like watching the commercials watch this here it's like watch and you know what are we talking about here well, it's like watching the commercials about all the medication mm-hmm. about uh tinnitus about something wrong with your knees or something wrong in your bladder or all these different things and the next thing you know you say well i think i might have that you know I'm, i need to go see my doctor but tell your doctor yeah. tell your doctor uh if you have these symptoms that you need and the next thing you know you start taking on these symptoms and you're a christian so you gotta realize you're a christian but see you covered in the blood can't nothing bother you you and you next thing you know you've got these symptoms and everything and the next thing when you go to the hospital you got it mm-hmm. it's not psychosomatic you open the door up to that spirit to come in and to torment you, and now you have that sickness or that disease right. that's there, and because it's been bombarded, and, you, and all the enemy's trying to do is just get in one. If he gets in one, mm-hmm. he's done his job. Mm-hmm. Right. That makes sense, but he's so, doing it by the masses. So these people Destin- that are going and, and, to these well, destiny well, cards. Th- well, th- here's what, here, let, me, let me tie it back into destiny. So that sickness that you picked up, it becomes part of your destiny. Right. See what I'm talking about? Because right. you received it. Oh, I got that. Yeah, that's me. Okay, now we're back to the destiny Okay, card. so someone's sitting there, a destiny card, and they speak something over me, whatever this card said. I've never been, you know. Um, look at the look at the video. I mean, look and at then, the Yeah, and you screen. see how she's got her hands, and they're doing like that? I'm like, what kind of, you know, new age stuff is that? Right. I mean, I encourage people to go on True News and, and to really type and just type in destiny cards. Right. And you will get article after article after article about this stuff. So and let's it t- is. Let's, so I, I got it on the screen. Is here. it a video? No, no, it's no, just okay. it's just an update. Uh, Bethel okay. Pastor defends the use of destiny cards. But let's just talk about the video here. Then we got to do a take a break for our okay. sponsors here. Okay. In just a moment. But look at the screen. We're going to take the screen here and we're going to look at it there for a moment. Okay. Uh, I don't think the people can see my mouse move on the screen there. But anyway, 
look at how that they have their hands on mm-hmm. top of each other. Mm-hmm. It's uh, and and look at, and and look at the cards. Now these cards are not fifty. These are not regular playing cards. No. No. Mm-hmm. Nor are these tarot cards, but they are a form of destiny cards that you can purchase and that you can buy. And that these people here, uh, who are the readers, they are readers and they are telling people about the cards. Now look at this lady who's up front in the flowered dress and she has her hands on top of this other lady. Mm-hmm. When look at this here, when when we have learned enough, those closet listening pastors who are out there, or people who are out there, you see how they're they they they're touching their hands or they got their hands right over each other and what have you. Ain't let nobody lay their hands on me. Exactly. I can tell you that I've done, I've learned that since I've dealt with deliverance. Mm-hmm. You're not touching me, in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. And there could be no transference of a spirit in any way because when people lay their hands on people, there is a transference. Right. And whatever's there, there's a transference. Okay. And uh, so anyway, you see them is happening right here. And then you see the person in the middle. There's a lady explaining her destiny card. And then over there at the very end, you can see how um, this man and this woman is um, using uh, a cell. It looks like a cell phone. Yeah. It, it's giving some information off of that. So wow. hold, hold that right there. And then uh, we're going to take a break here. Y'all take it just for a moment. Let me get my screen up. Here. Okay. Uh, so why he's getting that, I just want to tell you that this Christ Alignment Group, uh, in addition to dabbling in the occult, they're also pro-LBGTQ mm-hmm. and embrace New Age philosophies. Right. And that states that on their website. Right. And talks about what they believe in. And I'm telling you, it's very, it's very messed up. Right. We can, Pastor, you could take this show in any, any direction you want to take mm-hmm. it in because there's so much you can talk about as far as, you know, just on this subject matter. Um, and people are just ignorant. Okay, y'all ready? Here we yes. go. Right, let's okay. do it. This is Lee Moore of Lee Moore's Pool Services, and I'm a proud sponsor of It's Really Supernatural. Call me at 803-707-2258. I tether off to the Bible, and then I jump overboard into the land of the supernatural. Come, go with us. That's Lee Moore. Thank you, Lee Thank Moore, you. for supporting. Awesome All right. sponsor. Awesome. It's really supernatural. Whippoorwill Farms. Whippoorwill Farms, And yes. Iris Rose. Yeah. I know they support us as well. God bless you. Is anybody talking about anything on Facebook? Oh, uh, well, they're it? all listening. Yes. Tony Myers is like, yep, just like yoga and horoscopes. That's exactly right. They're yep. desensitized. Desensitized. Um, Iris Rose says that's why we record what few shows we watch and we fast forward through commercials. That's Mary smart. Hannah's like, mm-hmm. tell them, Pastor. Uh, Jerry Lida is saying hello, Bubba. I know Bubba. Jerry, yeah, I know Jerry for a uh, long Patton, time ago. Hey, Patton, you're watching. Paige Hicks. So we got a lot of people watching right now. And um, I encourage those of you that are watching, even after the show's over, to go on the Internet. Search it out for yourself. Search it out. True News, Destiny Cards. And I'm right. going to read this one paragraph right that ahead. come off of their, their website, the Christ Alignment Group website. It says, this team uses at least five different types of cards in our destiny readings. They are not necessary for an intuitive reader, as we are all hearing from the third heaven realm, but they greatly enhance the reading. We believe that they are more predictive and higher than most tarot cards and can address a current life question that you may have. Card readings with Christ alignment are always followed by the reader taking the client into an encounter into the highest realm. Often color is seen and it is in this realm answers come for questions that clients have and lives are changed. Yeah, question. Yeah. It's almost like going to a psychic reader. Right. Asking the questions. Mm-hmm. So let me just tell you some things. You know, okay. when you're talking about, when you're talking about it could be different kind of cards. Mm-hmm. So here's what I under, understand about the card, the card things. And we shared this before we started here tonight is that they take a regular deck of cards. They can tell their fortune or this kind of stuff from a deck of regular deck of cards. Playing cards. Playing cards. Okay. And uh, they look at that as being um, love cards. They call them. There's the love card books uh, that are out there you can buy that talks about how to decipher what what these deck of cards means. Mm-hmm. Regular wow. playing cards. Okay. And that's why uh, many will say is that you don't have to have a deck of tarot cards to tell your future or to tell you know your tell your destiny they do it with a regular deck of cards because they say that the the 52 cards that we have in our deck that the tarot cards came from that right or it's mm-hmm. the same thing your destiny cards comes from that same uh block that same type of a of a pattern that's there so look at look at it for a moment 
is that we look and see that there are are 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, you'll take a regular deck of cards and you start aces are one. And then you start adding up all the spots, all the numbers, numerical numbers that are on a deck of cards from the aces all the way to the kings. There are 365 Mm -hmm. um, numbers that are in a deck of 52 playing cards. In a deck of 52 playing cards, there are 52 weeks in a deck. Then you look at there are four different types of um, um, aces. I mean, the spades, the clubs. The, the hearts, hearts and, and diamonds, the diamonds mm-hmm. that each one of those represents a different type of oh, and there's four different um suits suits that mm-hmm. are different like and these fit different types of people personality and you realize this here if you've ever done anything with personality uh things where they you act and do real studies and personalities guess how many personalities there are four mm-hmm. i mean there are four different personalities and that follows suit. Let's use that. That's uh-huh. and that's what they do. They follow right, suit. There's right. four different groups that are in the cards, and and with that numerical values that are there, that of your birthday, if it's January, February, March, whatever it is, that that day is assigned to cards, and those are the cards that you have been dealt, and mm-hmm. that's how they do this here. And they look at the, whether or not they're assigned to clubs. Um, whether it be, di- I think they say diamonds are like old people or like the old people, the spades, wow. uh, or, or, wow. or the older people, the seniors, uh, the mm-hmm. spades are the older people. The clubs are like teenagers, uh, and different things like that. Hearts are like the younger folks and things like that. But anyway, this like plugs into who your, your psyche is and things mm-hmm. like that. And it goes all the way back to, um, Back before Socrates' time, back to the times of the Egyptians, mm-hmm. um, doing these cards and laying these cards down. And it goes back to psyche, which is the soul, trying to determine what is the soul, mm-hmm. uh, that person's, their destiny for the soul. Anyway, so a person who is trained in that can do it with, with a deck of cards. That's why, and understanding this for my own self now, is that that's the reason why a lot of the older people don't have cards. They don't have cards, and I'm not going to touch them. Right. You know, and then we, we kind of laugh at them and kind of say, oh, them a bunch of old fogies. No, them old fogies knows more about them cards no, than you do. the origin of it. Yeah. The right. origin of mm-hmm. them. They said, no, we're not going to have anything like that in our house and do anything uh, in, in those kind of things. So that's when you read that part about the destiny cards. It said it didn't have to necessarily be this kind of card. Right. But it could be any kind of cards that they can do these four things with and stuff like that. And the tarot cards are patterned after that as well. I don't know a whole lot about all that right. stuff. But I just know a little bit about as you do. You know, as we do our studies, we find out right. all that stuff. I'm going, and I, I forbid right. the transference of any, any spirit, spirit. in like any way. And if this intrigues you, experience. listen here, if this intrigues you to go out and find out about this here, that is not the purpose of this show. No, it is not. It is not to try to hook you or enhance it's you. to, to be inform you. It's to inform you. You need to stay away stay. from mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. Right. because this is another type of divination. And it goes right along right. with, um, what is it, Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Someone said, well, they talked the whole hour and didn't even give a scripture. Okay, give us a scripture. Deuteronomy 18. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that one lady told me, she says, I'm never going back to that church. That pastor preached that morning and never, never gave me a scripture out of the Bible. So I started thinking about that. I says, did I do that that Sunday? Pastor, and I, I don't know, know that you've ever done that. And I went back and listened to the sermon. I read a whole chapter that morning. Yeah. Where was she at? Maybe uh, she, she wasn't was in there yet. Yes, yes. She, maybe she wasn't there yet when I started. She came in late. But anyway, here's what it says in Deuteronomy 18 and verse 10. There shall not be a found among you any one that makes his son or daughter pass through the fire. Or uses divination. Y'all uh-huh. think about what we're talking uh-huh. about now. Or an observer of times. Uh-huh. Okay. Because that's what they're doing with their birthdays. Yes. And uh, you got to find out all that. Or right. an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before you. So he tells us it's not supposed to even be found among us right. in any of those things. And here's just a lot of things is, is that don't let the devil beat you up mm-hmm. if you have if you've done and you it, didn't just, know. Right. But right. There is a God forgive me for being involved in this here. I renounce this in the name of Jesus. I don't want to be involved in this here. 
And what we tell everybody is what they need to do now. Mm. They need to go through deliverance. deliverance. It's one thing to do it out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to intentionally go and seek it out. When you're ignorant of something and you don't know. Right. Then, you know, I mean, that's that's different. You repent, you go on, you go through deliverance, and it's done. But when you go out and just intentionally uh, seek this kind of stuff. Right. That's. That's kind of scary to me. This woman even wrote a book. And, you know, the ti- if you were in a bookstore and you heard this, stepping into your supernatural destiny. Yeah. You, I you would, would pick, think. Yeah. Let's, let's listen oh, to this that. this is good. But this mm-hmm. is one quote out of her book. Supernatural creativity can impact people who are coming to your church for the very first time. During the school year, I have a school of ministry. Students sit at Bethel's welcome table And prophesy to newcomers through destiny cards, singing and playing instruments over people. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I was just thinking about was that uh, even, um, it's kind of even tied to what we talked about the other week when we talked about the Harlequin. But one of the things I remember when I would visit the bookstore, that there was, this was, I I don't know if it's the same now. Or not, but it used to be where there was a big section for New Age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the they New still Age had section. New Age still there. stuff. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. New Age section was big. And one of the things I was going to ask the question, yeah. and Pastor, you just jump right in. Uh, the question was asked, if, even in our notes, we was asking, mm-hmm. it said, uh, do we see the infiltration of the New Age movement in, th- in our churches? Mm. Do we see the infiltration of the New yeah. Age movement in yes. our churches? Yes, we do. And I'm going to tell you, my firsthand experience Go ahead. Okay. was that a lot of times when you see some type of new movement yeah. that's supposed to be, in other words, it's kind of, it's, it's brought in as something that's going to bring, quote unquote, life to the church. And at the same time, a lot of times they slowly move it in. Mm-hmm. Sometimes to the degree of which it's kind of done in a very uh, dis- discretionary or hidden manner, and they'll do it through the small groups, you know, like uh-huh. your small the small groups that are in church, and then when they're meeting, yeah, right, they have someone in there that's introducing exactly, and the these teachings, and the pastors don't know it, right? right. Sometimes it's the pastors don't know it, yeah, but sometimes it's through the fact that if you have started a st- it's almost like the door is opened when you get away from teaching certain things in the pulpit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In other words, when it's not known that, okay, do we, oh, do, how do we stand for, uh, as far as the LGBTQ, whatever they are, how do we stand? How what many is more our letters stand? can they put on how that? In, how is our church stand toward that? If we're welcoming them all in and we're not preaching, you know, the, the, the word, and, yes. and, mm-hmm. and it comes to that, to me, that's when I started seeing, okay, that is an open door mm-hmm. because those, you know, you know and so that, there you go. Well, and, and let me, can I, I want to pick up on, yes. on that is that I think you're exactly right when you talk about the small group setting when that, and there are a lot of large church, and it has to be large, it'd be small. I mm-hmm. mean, and you know, there's all kinds of small groups. Uh, where they're meeting at, and that's that's where exactly. I what I want to know. That's one of them. And that's then, one thing. and then the thing is, is that at what level are these people taught, who are leading these small groups? And not only that, let's let's do this here. Not only that with the small groups, is that that ever who the small group leader is when they're meeting, say in their home or someone's home, and then they go in and they bring out their bottle, or they bring out their destiny cards, or they bring out songs, or they're doing whatever is a lot of them are, are afraid to say, Hey, no, we're not, no, we're not doing this. You know, we know we got to stop this. This isn't right. We can't right. do this here uh, in that, in that it's the open door. The small group is the open door that the enemy's looking for. And I think, and I really believe a lot of churches have been split. Mm-hmm. A lot of churches have been split. A lot of been splintered groups have went off because of the small group settings. Uh, and they have, and here, and here's what I say about that, about the small groups. And they say, hey, you know, we need to do a small group because, uh, you know, so that our church can grow and everything. I said, whoa, 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 let me, let me think about this here. We have a Sunday morning meeting mm-hmm. and you don't come to that. <laughs> we have a Sunday night meeting and you don't come to that. We have a Wednesday night meeting and you don't come to that. 
we have a Tuesday night meeting for prayer and you don't come to that and you want to start a small group setting meeting at your house? No, you don't realize. No, we're not falling into that. Right. I'm not, I, I, I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let's fill up what we got. Right. And right. we've got a lot of teaching. We got Sunday mm -hmm. school and we got a lot of teaching already. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And do you and you don't want to come to that, but you want a small group in your house? <laughs> that sounds to me almost like a wolf. Mm -hmm. and, right. remember, and remember the teaching I talk about the wolf. I'm concerned about the wolf. And that I'm telling everybody who's out there that home group setting right. is ripe for the wolf. Yes. I agree it's with right for the wolf. So if you're meeting at home with a pastor who says he's whatever, I'm telling you, you are ripe for a wolf spirit right. to get in mm -hmm. and to destroy. Does that mm -hmm. make sense what I'm saying? Right. Now, I could, and I'm not, I'm not against house churches. because That's how they found them in the Bible. Right. But I'm just trying to let you know that when someone tells me house church, my antenna goes up. And I go, I'm very, very cautious. That's where the wolf, that's the door for the wolf right, right there. Exactly. Right, exactly. That makes sense. Right. And uh, anyway, so the, and the destiny cards, though, is what we're talking about, is interjecting those into a meeting mm -hmm. or something like that uh, and trying to perform, you know, trying to tell their future. You can accept your future through a deck of playing cards. There are people who read their palms. Palm readers, when you go, look at them. They're touching their palms here. Mm hmm that's almost like a palm reader. Look at it on the screen. Can you see that? I mean, let me turn it around for these people here. Yeah, I think they can see it, right? I mean, it's just like them reaching there, touching their palms. Uh -huh. it's almost, you know, you understand what I mean? They right. look at their palms or read them, their marriage lines or whatever they have in their hands or life lines or what have you. And people start to take on this belief right. mm -hmm. that this is what's going to happen to me. And that's the same thing it is even in a church where I believe in prophecy. Y'all. Right. Uh, and, and I want I want to tell you this here. Uh, I had a person prophesy over me one time, a sister Schaefer, and they said, uh, and, and and I was the minister. I was ministering there. I was there visiting, and a lady came up and prophesied over me. The Lord says that you'll be a, a youth pastor, blah, 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 blah. Me and Sister Schaefer, you'll be a youth pastor and all this stuff. And after the service is over, what I looked over at Sister Schaefer, and I said, but this lady, boy, she got it wrong, didn't she? See, because we had just went through a situation to where our youth group that we had been part of, I mean, it was booming. And they didn't want us to be part of it. I mean, we were absolutely rejected. So I'm saying, this ain't never going to happen. It was within two weeks. My name was on a bulletin where we'd been made youth pastors over church. And I said, that woman was right. You see uh -huh. what I'm getting at? Right. So right. a lot of times, see, a lot of times that uh, the prophecy can come. You know what I mean? God wants to use you in that. And the prophecy can come, but you still don't. To run out and say, well, I'm going to be a youth pastor. I'm going to be a youth pastor. I'm going to... You let God open the door. Let him do what he's going to do on it. And never base your life off of a prophecy that somebody gives you. That's amazing. Don't base your prophecy, your life off of a prophecy. God will speak it to your heart first. Confirm it through the prophet, through the prophecy. And, it, and I'll say one more thing. And I do believe that there are people who have the gift of prophecy. Sure. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and and I do believe that that night God can line people up and he can prophesy. I right. do believe that. But if you're following people around so that you can get a personal prophecy, but brothers and sisters, you are, you've got a wrong spirit working mm -hmm. through you. Mm -hmm. Or that person that you call up and say, hey, I need you to, what's God showing you about me? He ain't showing me nothing about you. Right, you know what I mean? Right, right. He shows me a lot, but he ain't showing me nothing about you. Yeah. And if he did show me stuff about you, I wouldn't tell you. Yes. Did that make right. sense? I yes. pray for you. But I'm not going to speak words into your life to try to perform your destiny. Go ahead, sister. Well, let me just let me just address something. We had someone give a comment here on Facebook, so I wanted to be sure and share Let's bring it where on. this came from. Um, this Christmas critique of destiny cards and us saying that um, this um, Teresa Dead, uh, Deadman, mm -hmm. uh, she says that she is a pastor at Bethel Church, Reading, and this is on her website teresa deadman.com that you can go and pull this up yeah mm -hmm. this is not something we pulled up this is something she wrote right talking about mm -hmm. destiny cards and what she does and that she's a pastor at bethel church ready and the other one here is true news and 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 true news so the reason i'm saying this is because we had one of our our ladies here on facebook that said that she had been out to bethel and she never saw anything like that and don't let the practice of one person define the practice of a whole congregation no but at the same time our job is to warn you about right. destiny cards. Right. 
So, you know, I'm just reading the article that we read was from her own website. Right. There you go. Teresa Dedman, uh, dot com. So you mm -hmm. can get that off of her website, not just the True News website. Oh, so I just wanted to address that so that's they good. would know that we did not just pull from them. She said, I am a pastor. Mm hmm one of the pastors of that church and this is what we do mm -hmm. welcoming new members and i am over the creative arts department something another of the church what was that what was the name of the place there in new zealand christ alignment christ alignment in what, new zealand they and, had they you see this video that's on the screen here of this is at bethel here uh, -huh. uh um, although a destiny card reading looks like and contains many of the same actions as tarot cards readings they are not really occult according to a pastor that has been criticized for advocating their use so that's that's the picture taken as them doing it. Right. And there were two videos that was pulled from Christ Alight. What's the name of that place? Christ Alight? Christ Alignment. Christ Alignment. Christ Alignment that had on there. I, see, I'd have been to the website. Right. I'd have Absolutely. Been, I'd, have been, I'd, have prepared, I'd have been prepared for this. And to pull down the videos of them doing their destiny readings mm -hmm. and all, and they removed them. Right. They pulled those videos down. So those are the kind of things that when you see, you need to pull it. Get it, archive it, because uh -huh. it's happening, and it is a controversial yeah. point, and that's why we're controversial. Right. Well, I just want to also say that this Teresa Dedman, in her book, okay, so it's in her book, Supernatural Destiny, or Stepping Into Your Supernatural Destiny, she says that I have a school of ministry, students sit at Bethel's welcome table and prophesy to newcomers through destiny cards, singing and playing instruments. Mm -hmm. So this is her saying this is not us no, let's say accusing it. her right. of something. This is her saying it. So um, anyway, so let me ask I just you the wanted question. to make sure. Let me ask you a question. If I came, if I came to your church and I saw these cards lay out on this table like this mm -hmm. here, and people holding their hands out like they were doing the right. card reading, and things like that. Well, that's what Rick Wilde said of True News. He says, I'm absolutely frightened to go into a lot of charismatic churches nowadays. Right. He said, I don't want to go in unless I have a crucifix. Mm -hmm. He said, because I don't know what I'm going to get when I walk in. And that, and that's exactly what I understand. But mm -hmm. it's not only charismatic church, it's any church. Right, right. any church. It's yes. any church because yes. it, could, it, it could be any pastor, uh, any anyone who is not knowledgeable of these things can allow these things to come in and be part of and start to infiltrate the church. Mm -hmm. And that's all the enemy wants to do. But you know, it gets, I still become very cynical in that. And the people says, well, none of this can hurt me because I'm a Christian. I'm going, you're the one the devil's targeting, right? He's targeting you to stop you from being effective wow. in your ministry. So you know, open door. That's well, the Bible tells us we fight against, <laughs> spiritual i mean you know what i mean it's it's like i don't know how people what do they do tear that out of their bible ephesians right. 6 mm -hmm. yeah we continue to fight against it every day every day right you one know? one of the things i want to comment on just is going to be quick but tell us brother one of the things when i first and i don't want to give him a testimony and everything we because we're about to run out of time mm -hmm. but pastor taught me some things early on in my christian walk right a lot of the things some of the things that he's actually starting to talk teach on again one of the things was uh, like the test of true and false ministers mm -hmm. he taught me on that and then it was just a lot of foundational things that we learned early on and it was just so great because mm -hmm. when i got that foundation what it did it did what is it um uh, i got away f i wasn't able to be drawn in by a lot of things that just weren't were not right even though i was young and i didn't know a lot about you know didn't mm -hmm. really know much about anything you know right. but the, because i got a, a fairly basic foundation early on mm -hmm. it it, it uh, basically protected me from a lot of the things a lot of yeah, yeah and I so agree. a lot of times uh -huh. when a person just like pastor was talking about the seeker friendly church uh-huh how a lot of people are coming into these churches and they don't realize that there is holiness that this that's i mean that is who you are as a christian mm -hmm. and if they don't they don't but they could be pulled in into a church and not even realize that holiness has nothing to do with their christian experience mm, yeah because of the environment that they're in and what they're it's being not taught. Ever taught they're mm -hmm. not being taught the basic basic fundamentals mm -hmm. of christianity they're not being taught and it's and it's not by in other words it is by design it is sure it, it is, it is sure deception it is. that's going on uh -huh. and uh 
it's it's pretty rough. But I mean, we can go on, Pastor. Well, I, I see the comment. What you're talking about uh-huh. is on here. It's it's made by Tracy. It's about be careful of who you accuse, mm-hmm. and that's not the purpose of this show. That's not it was the purpose not, of this yeah. show. The purpose of this show is bring to light destiny cards. Mm-hmm. And if you are part of a church that is bringing forth destiny, using destiny cards for prophecy, then you need to be aware of that. That is this is correlated to tarot card reading mm-hmm. and the or, occult or and, and the uh, the occult. Uh-huh. And the thing is, is that when you look at what's being propagated over the internet, I mean the it's. Ha- that it has the articles of the names of the churches right. where it's happening. We didn't at. come up with I that. I didn't come up with that. Right. Right. Exactly. I, I'm just I'm just asking that. You know, mm-hmm. you have to ask the things here. Now, therefore, I'm not going to get I'm not going to be defensive of why I'm bringing this up. Exactly. But the thing is, is you have to be very careful yourself. Is that thank God that there's a voice of sanity that's out there that's trying to bring to light mm-hmm. destiny mm-hmm. cards, whether they're scriptural or not. And when you look at the the, these different things that are there saying, hey, listen, maybe this is something that I need to be aware of. And maybe, just maybe, my family or my daughter or my son or someone is going to be tied up into destiny cards. And God's trying to give me information now to help to, them. To That's know right. what to do about it. To know it. what That's to do right. when it happens. Right. You see what I mean? And the Bible says, my people perish for, for lack. lack of knowledge. Well, I'm going to tell you something else, too. This has nothing to do with destiny cards. But if I walked into a church and they had a whole line of people lined up and trying to send me through to let all these people lay hands on me and pray for me, I would turn around and walk out. Yeah, right. Now, now we would. Now, I, they ain't no. Nobody sending me through a fire tunnel no more. You got that right. I don't care what kind of Mm-mm. name you got on you. Wow. That's exactly right. So, I mean, it's just it's just a lot of messed Too up stuff. Too much going on. It. Right. And so we just need to make people aware of it. I didn't hear nobody over here say stay, stay on the air. <laughs> I think we got a few people say, be careful. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't see nobody on here. All right. Tony Meyer yeah. says, yes, we uh, need to be bold in the truth. That's right. Yeah. The fire tunnel. Yep. Not happening. That's right. Tony. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. We got seven people watching. Speaking that's of that's Tony, we, we have got to get with you on a date to get you down here. So we haven't forgotten about yeah, that. We'll have him at the church. Preach yes. for us as well. Let we him pray him for in. some folks mm-hmm. as well. Absolutely. All right. Anybody got anything else going on here? Do we, did we, uh, are we close? I think we're close. We're about two minutes out. Okay. And but and you know and and I'm all open to, uh, if somebody needs to call and give the other side, call us. Oh, call us up. Give them the number. You know, uh, and sit right here and we'll do a show. You tell to explain to me what I what I'm missing mm-hmm. on this thing. Mm-hmm. Explain to me so so I, so that I can give the real thing. And by the way, uh, no, I'm not buying a set of them things. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Anyway, all right. It's been a good show tonight, though, and I hope that it's made someone aware. It. You know, I don't want um, anyone to be deceived. And so uh, Paige said, I did. She did what? I don't know. You did what, Paige? She's what did Paige do? I don't, know. I don't oh, know what she did. <laughs> I guess she liked it. <laughs> but any, oh, stay on air, she said. Stay on air. Stay on air. Stay on the air. Pastor, so, that's up to yes, you sir. now because we got a lot. We could, we could go on and on. Oh, we could do this destiny card thing. Uh, I mean, no, uh, because there's videos and it talks about your destiny card, your love cards, there's books that you can. Get. And and let me and let me just say this while I got to don't think about that. God, God doesn't. He's not interested in numbers. Mm-hmm. He is. I mean, he's got a whole book called numbers. Mm-hmm. Numbers is his thing. But what the devil does, he takes that and perverts it. Mm-hmm. Right. See mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? He takes those things that God has made and he perverts that. Okay. And, right. Pastor, we got people saying, stay on the air. Absolutely stay on yeah. the air. Awesome oh, show needed to be brought up. Stay on the air. All right. So, you know, we can, and you know, here's the thing. Destiny cards, we could stay on that for hours. Right. But here's a lot of these other things that, right. that people do um, along the same lines. Okay, so you talk about destiny cards, fortune tellers. What about people that... Um, what do they call that? Where you do a string over you and arm or something? Oh like yeah, that yeah. Divination. That's divination. divination. Yeah. Uh, right. Are you gonna have a boy or a girl? Boy or girl. Divination. Mm. We could talk about all that Messed for a long stuff. time. We, we sure could. All right, anyway. Gerald. Go ahead and tell us your goodbyes or whatever, Dana. We are saying goodbye. We're saying goodbye, Sp- goodbye guys. Goodbye, CSRA. And loved you. Thanks uh, for listening. Yeah, we'll see y'all next week on it's really supernatural. Be sure to go ahead and share this video now. Thanks. I'm Henry Schaefer, 
And I want to thank you for listening to It's Really Supernatural program. Now tune in next week for more Acts of the Holy Spirit.